Hello everyone, today I'm going to cover the TNT duping array used in the Pearl Cannon project. Before I go over the specific designs, I recommend you watch Myron's explanation of TNT duping if you would like to understand the theory behind it. The duping array was intended to be stackable, so it had to be as slack friendly as possible. This adds quite a bit of complications on top of TNT duping, which is already restrictive. In order to duplicate TNT, you need to update the body TNT and move it using only a single piston. As of 1.11, the source of update must be from moving rails. Since a single piston must do everything, the update order of moving blocks is important. The rail has to move before the TNT, and it has to be positioned in a way the TNT cannot get stuck on it. So like in this layout, if you move the TNT, the TNT can get stuck on the rail here. So if you would like to use this setup, you need to place a block above the rail. This is the layout that is used in most mobile TNT dupers. The alternative is to raise the rail one block higher, because the rail also causes updates around the block below it. Conventional TNT dupers used minecarts and detector rails in order to butt power the TNT. But since this TNT duping array was meant to be lag friendly, using hundreds of entities was not an option. So instead, I used redstone redirection to butt power the TNT. This adds its own set of challenges because they are not perfectly tileable and you need a gap in between each dust. On top of that, the wires had to butt power the TNT before duplicating it but redirect it away almost immediately so the TNT doesn't ignite after being pushed. So this was my first design. A single piston would push both the TNT and the rail connected by some slime at the front. The layout is shown here in a simplified version. Because of the 12 block push limit, each piston could duplicate a maximum of 4 TNT each. So I doubled it up by sharing the butt power in the middle so each module has two sets of pistons, duplicating a total of 8 TNT. I noticed the TNT only falling in three different blocks per row, so I made this simple basket using a couple of double extenders. We originally did not expect to use a lot of TNT, so I thought 40 should be enough. I arranged the modules in a plus shape and then shot them towards the middle using some slime blocks. Afterwards, I suggested to use this layout for duping 6 TNT per piston, which would be the absolute maximum possible due to the push limit. It would also be easy to butt power them using redstone redirection because there's TNT only every second block. So using this layout, Methods made this system, which retracts all the blocks to the side to let the TNT fall down. So inside this monstrosity, there are 8 modules, which adds up to being a total of 96 TNT being duplicated. The basket uses TT's 20 meters per second conveyor belt to quickly collect the TNT, since there isn't much time left after all the TNT has fallen down. Unfortunately, after almost 100 hours of testing, we discovered that there was a very low chance of TNT clipping into the slime block and being pulled back with the blocks, which would blow up the entire machine. Originally, we didn't expect to use a lot of TNT for each shot, but after the enderpearl research by XCOM, it was critical for us to develop new duping arrays that could be stacked on a large scale while also leaving most of the fuse time for inter-module compaction. More about TNT compaction will be shown on Methods channel. For our final design, we settled on this layout, which duplicates 5 TNT per piston and 10 TNT per module. It works very similarly to my initial design, but I was able to squeeze in an extra TNT after testing the slime block update order. 
When rows of blocks are equal distance away from the piston, the horizontal axes are always processed before the vertical axes, so this layout works in any direction. So, we got a nice duplicating layout, but it definitely needed some work. Here on SciCraft, we take lag very seriously, and all these redstone dust had to go for a large-scale project like this. After replacing the wires with rails and observers, I thought that was a job done well. Then, we decided to run each module twice, aligning the TNT differently. So here is the module with a modified basket. Every second round is pushed against the fence, and the toggle state logic is done by this sticky piston here. Just when I thought we were finally done, XCOM made a breakthrough and showed an even faster way to collect TNT using fence gates on either side, and so the basket had to be redone again. The fence gate at the front immediately pushes the first TNT, while the fence gate at the back stops the last TNT from being pushed over and allows it to fall straight down. This removes one whole step in the collection process and reduces the area we need to cover. And so, this is our final TNT duping module. It's completely free of blinking redstone dust, it has toggle state alignment, and collects all the TNT with a remaining fuse time of 51 game ticks. That concludes the TNT duplication modules. XCOM is going to cover the process of fine-tuning the timings using MCP, and Methods is going to cover the compaction of TNT in an array of these modules, so be sure to check them out. Links are in the description as well as a world download of these modules. Thanks for watching!